Okay, now I'm good to go. Microphone's on, camera's on, phone is on, and here we are for an added adventure. I got some great stuff to share with you today. Um, first of all, I want to share how my day's been going. It was going pretty good. Everything was in order. I had to write a check, and so I couldn't find my checkbook. <laughs> so I looked all around, and I did not find it. I know it's somewhere. You know, I never write out checks. But anyway, I did not find my checkbook, but what I did find was my cat's brush. I've been looking for that forever. So I'm happy to say I found the cat's brush, and I know those checks will affirm, uh, will show up somewhere. And if you would affirm with me, um, Dear St. Anthony, please come round. Something's lost and can't be found. When I get home, without a doubt, I'll find my checks. I'll seek them out. <laughs> know with me that's going to happen. I know they're there somewhere. Okay, so then I have something really special to show you today, but it's not time yet. So, um, so when I was looking for this other thing that I wanted to uh, find for you today, I found some other interesting stuff. The first thing I found is this. It is called Great Golden Goals. I got this from Edwin Gaines, and uh, she's a unity uh, minister, prosperity teacher, very well known. And I'm also actually very happy to add that um, while Edwin was recently in intensive care, we are saying prayers of gratitude because she is out. She's back home. She had pneumonia, not the, uh, you know what, I don't want to name it anymore. I want to just, you know what. And uh, so, but this was done, at least if I put a date on it. Oh, this isn't my, this is I didn't bring down the one with the date. Maybe God didn't want me to get personal about what I'd had as my goals. But it was interesting because it was old. It was probably from the 80s and or early 90s. And, um, but this is, remember how we've been talking and talking about goals? Well, this little piece, I have my name on it. One would have thought my goals would have been in it. But um, we've been talking about, did you make a goal? What have you done with your goal? Have you done anything? And on the back of it, it says, 12 steps to successful achievement. In a notebook dedicated to your goal setting program, write all your desires, no matter how large or small. What do you desire? My desires were in my little goal book, and I looked at it, and some of them have manifested, many of them, and some have not. And there's a reason for that. Well, there's more than one reason, but I will share with you a couple of the reasons in just a minute. Anyway, um, you want to write down your goals. We've already kind of gone around that, so maybe you're started. But... When you write them down, you can't just write them down and God's going to fill it. You know, you're going to find it in your stocking in the morning. That doesn't happen. It says to write down your desires. And I've got to straighten this out because I don't know if it's straight for you, but it's crooked for me. But, well, rather than knock the whole thing over, it's just going to make me crazy because I think it's crooked. Ah! Oh, well. Got to learn to live with something. The word desire means of D, the father, sire, desire. In unity, we've taught very often that your dreams are, are not your dreams. They're God's dreams for you. That we all came here on a mission. We each fulfill a part of that mission. Look at it as your body. Your heart fulfills a mission. Your kidneys fulfill a mission. Your eyes, your ears, everything fulfills a mission. So our dreams, our desires, are not really our dreams. They are God's dreams and desires for us. The, we were all given gifts. And, uh, and I don't care what your gift might be. Your gift might be being an artist. 
your gift might be um, uh, being a garbage man and loving to a garbage person and loving to keep everything clean. It may be being a hairdresser. Maybe whatever it is, if you are called to do one thing and it, you're really called to it and you desire to do it but you're not doing it, this is a great time to sit and think about it and see are you fulfilling not, not you know, what the human part says, what you need to do, but the spiritual part, what you're called to do. One of my absolute heroes uh, was Bob Hope, and he always will be one of my heroes. And uh, for those of you that are too young to know, he's a, a very good comedian, a satirist. He was just amazing. And, um, and I just would, who would have thought, what if somebody said to him, Bob, a comedian? Come on, that's, you know, how could being a comedian have a calling? Now, I don't think every comedian has a calling. I think some of them do it for money. Some may do it for ego. I don't know what Bob Hope did, but he touched hearts and changed lives with laughter. He expanded people's consciousness. He blessed people every day, every single Christmas. From like World War II, I think, till practically he was no longer able to travel. I think he made it to 99. I'm not sure if he actually made it to 100. He would go and entertain troops. He would go into war zones. He would do whatever he had. And he would take a bunch of other stars with him. The one that comes top of my mind is Bing Crosby, of course. And he would take Anne Margaret. And, and uh, another one that he took a lot was, um, goodness sakes, uh, God, I love her and I can't think of her name. She was in a show called Suddenly Susan. Mm, anyway, uh, fantastic. But he would bring them, he would bring joy to the troops. And the laughter and the joy that he would bring gave those people hope. So, <laughs> Bob, hope. Isn't that wonderful? So, if anyone had talked him out of being a comedian, all the people that love him would have been denied that wonderful blessing of hope, even in the midst of a war. You have a gift to bring, whatever it is, you know, don't so much question it. Our dreams are not our dreams. They're God's dreams for us. Don't be afraid to follow your dreams. Even if somebody else says they're silly. You know, when I got my call to ministry, I was praying and, uh, you know, and, and in my ear, I heard it, minister, unity minister. And I thought, oh, Lord, what is my family going to say now? <laughs> They've watched me go through a number of transformations and growing in my life. And I said, oh, my God, what is she going to do, a minister? And, of course, at the time, I was still a good Catholic girl. I'm still a good girl, and I have parts of my Catholic roots keep me going. Believe me when I tell you, truth is everywhere. So, about your dreams and desires. I would also like to say I found, when I was looking for that other thing, I found several of these, which I would be more than happy to send. Uh, I have a lot. I have, whoever first come, first serve, uh, you can private message me your yes, I want one, and your address, and I'll send it to you. So while we're talking about that, that is a form of abundance, and that's the daily word. I didn't think about this. I didn't realize the daily word was abundance today until I came down to the office, and there it was. And I'm so excited because it says abundance surrounds me. Today on the news, they keep saying, you know what? You know what? You know what tomorrow is? Do you know what tomorrow is? Well, I'm promising everybody I'm not going to do an April Fool trick, okay? Because I just, I'm just not up for thinking about that. And besides, this is, sometimes April Fool's tricks, people don't like them. But it is no April Fool that people are very, very concerned about paying their bills. It's the first of the month for many people tomorrow. And they have to pay the rent, and they have to pay their bills, and, and insurance and everything else. And... I am inviting you today to rise above that horrible, gut-gripping fear that tomorrow's going to come. 
They're not going to have the money for the bills. We have to pray knowing there will be a way. You will be able to work with your company. A lot of companies, they understand what we're going through. They're going through it too. So let's look for ways, what did we say yesterday? Out of the box. Don't confine yourself to the box of limited thinking. There are ways that will come to you. And those ways are not, as I said, common. They are uncommon. So, here's another abundance thing. And there is um, limited, again, I found when I was looking for stuff, a limited number of uh, these. Do you remember the picture I shared on Sunday, uh, Metaphysical Jesus? I have several of them, not a lot. If you want to uh, private message me your uh, mailing address, I will send it. Um, I don't know what kind of response. Maybe nobody will be respond. But if you respond, pick number one goals or number two, uh, the picture. I can't copy them because they are uh, copyrighted somewhere, I'm sure. And you know we always want to respect the author. So... If you want one of those, there's all kinds of abundance for us. And I found something else. This is one of my journals. It is from uh, 1995. At that time, <clears throat> I'd, been, uh, I'd been ordained for three years. And I was basing this journal on um, a, a book I was reading. You know, in my, in my prayer time, I usually have some sort of book that I read, and, and this one had thoughts and scriptures for every day. So today, well, it was actually yesterday, because then I don't have another entry until um, April 4th. But this one was very powerful. Listen to it and see if you might fall into that same thing. It says, uh, the scripture that day was from uh, Romans 125, and it says, For they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. And I asked myself the question, how often do I serve the creature rather than the creator? So when we look at this, there's a couple ways we could look at it. We could look at it as, am I serving the creature, being, meaning we're being a people pleaser instead of a God pleaser? Or does it mean that we're pleasing this creature instead of the wonderful, amazing power through which we were created? Think about that. Are we serving the creator or the creature? Sometimes, let's think of the word creature comforts and I think you'll get it. You know what I didn't ask you today? You all know it. What are you wearing? So I want to share what I'm wearing uh, because it's important. Usually we get dressed and there is thing, there's things we look for in getting dressed. When I was looking at my videos, I said, man, do I have anything? This is black or brown. It seems like every day I'm wearing black or brown and I'm telling you to watch your consciousness by coloring the little pictures well, what if we watch our consciousness by what we're wearing? And um, so, I, did you notice I have these are my galaxy pants on because I didn't want to wear everything dark. But I couldn't find anything but dark tops. But I have a very good reason for that. I tend to be kind of like... I run fast, <laughs> everything I do is fast, and because I run fast, hurry, grab, do, grab, I kind of tend to spill a little bit. So because I have all dark tops, I usually get things that stains won't show up on because I'm good at that. I am very good at spilling and making messes and, 
when I, my art teacher used to say that uh, in class I'd come out with more paint than, than uh, I, on, the, on me than on the paper. So if that, it's not a bad thing. It, it just, it is what it is. I am who I am. So I'm going to show you something about me. It is what it is, and I am that I am. Have you felt at all that um, you're limited, that life isn't working out? I'm going to show you a word. Oh, we are on day. We are on day 14. You'll notice it's marked in brown instead of black. Somebody left the cover off the marker and it dried out. Isn't it awful when you're the only one there so like, hello, <laughs> guess who did it? But I forgive because I know I'm so nice. Okay, so let's do this. I'm hoping you can read that. If you can read it, I, did, I they only have these pointy ones. I didn't have the flat market. It says impossible. And how many times have you thought something is impossible? I'm going to move this closer in case you can't see it. Maybe if I move it closer, you can. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? You know what? Ah, there we go. So it says, impossible. If you're looking at that, I wrote it frontwards and backwards at the same time. Ta-da! It's a gift. I understand that all left-handed people can do that. So if you're left-handed and you want to have some fun today, sit down and write things frontwards and backwards at the same time. Impossible is not a very encouraging word, though, is it? So if we take it and we put a line here, line here, instead of saying impossible, it says I'm possible. You're possible. Every dream, every desire, every wish, if it's God's will for us, we'll have it. Okay. Don't need to read that anymore. <clears throat> so, we've talked before, God is not Santa Claus. God is not here to, um, there, everywhere, uh, just to give you what you want. God gives us dreams and desires, and we are the ones that manifest them. Okay, now to my uh, big deal of the day today. We're going to talk about creative visualization. What our, I uh, think of, Oh, it was big for him, Jesse Jackson. What the mind can conceive and the heart can believe, we can achieve. And that's metaphysics, the power of thought. The thought connected with the feeling manifests. So we want to make sure that our thoughts and our feelings are working together. You can think about something as long as you want, but if you have no emotion about it, no feeling about it, it's never going to manifest. Things manifest when we connect a thought and a feeling. And a lot of it, we, we've said it over and over, it's in our mind. In order to achieve it, we have to believe it so we can receive it, okay? One day, um, I, was, I read uh, in Chicken Soup for the Soul, one of those, one of those books, there was a story, and I, I tried to research it to see, is this at for absolute sure? Um, but it's, they, they got a man's name, and, uh, but the story is good. According to the story, uh, this man was a, a prisoner in Vietnam, and he spent his time, a piece of every day, closing his eyes, and through his imagination, which is extremely powerful, he would play one of his favorite 19 hole golf, golf courses. So he, I guess they're all 19 holes, aren't they? 18, 18. Well, that's how much I know about golf. Anyway, he would do his, he had played at golf courses all around 
uh, the country. So in his mind, he would go out and he would play golf in all these golf courses. When he got out, he had actually improved as a golfer. Now, there's a story that I know is true. It's an experiment they did with basketball players. And what they did is they took one team, they, they, they took two teams, and one of them they just told to practice, do their regular stuff every day. The other team they told, uh, yeah, you have to practice too much. What we want you to do is practice in your head. Practice those shots. See yourself get in that basket, feel it, dong. You know that sound it makes when it hits the backboard and falls into the ding, 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 ding. So get it, think it, feel it, think it, feel it, and you will manifest it. And I know this to be true for another reason. One day, I'm a bowler. I like big, big, heavy balls to throw around. Get that aggression out. Anyway, so one day I was bowling. I was on a league, and I got one of those uh, splits like this. That's how much I know bowling is. I don't know what they call it, a, a 3 seven, ten split, something like that. And th that's like you get that and you go, well, hang that up. It was usually ball goes right down the middle. But I stood there and I held my bowling ball and I looked down the alley and I said, if I just follow the principles, I know where the ball has to hit in order for those pins to go down. I know I have, I can do this. I will be darn through that ball. Ding! Everybody went wild because nobody guessed that one. And so I was thrilled and I did it. Conversely, one day, this was like this, this past bowling season or the, it, this past bowling season, I got it. This stu, this idea just came to my head that said, you can't bowl. Well, where did that come from? Did it come from my lower consciousness, that my fear or whatever? I just got it in my head, a thought that I can't bowl. And I went bowling that night. Lo and behold, I couldn't bowl. I threw it here, I threw it there, I threw it someplace else. I couldn't bowl. By the end of the third game, I had gotten myself out of the state of consciousness that couldn't bowl. I remembered I'm possible. This way or that way? I'm possible. Okay, so now what I was hunting for when I find, found the other stuff. Oh. Oh, we're go, got to go back to abundance for a minute. This was tucked in hiding here, probably like my checkbook is hiding somewhere. These, when I do my prayer time, I've said it before, when I do my prayer time, I, I make little notes. I don't care. You couldn't read this if you tried because of my handwriting. But you'll notice all these pages, some have coffee on them. Every once in a while you spill. Um, but all these thoughts are things that I'm sharing with you there are things that come to me during my prayer time. I say, oh, oh, I want to share that. Oh, I want to share that. This is abundance, folks. If I sat around and said, I can't think of anything to say, I can't think of anything to do, these papers would be blank. But because I always say, I am open and receptive to God's living spirit of truth. That is an excellent, excellent affirmation. I am open and receptive to God's living spirit of truth. There are ideas out there just like there are blades of grass out in your yard. There's plenty of ideas. I had another adventure before I open this up. I had another adventure while I was doing this. This, first of all, is not the one I wanted. The one I wanted, for whatever reason, uh, wouldn't show up. But it brought me to my treasure chest. Under my bed, I have a box. And in that box are my treasures. If you know my address and you want to come steal them, you will be sorely disappointed. Because those treasures in my treasure box are memories. 
And there's nothing more precious than memories. And what a wonderful thing to help us get through these challenging times are wonderful messages. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll feel holy. So I dug through that box and eh, kind of got off time a little bit because I was so involved in the past. Well, we want to stay grounded in the past of our memories and all the good things we've had in life, and we also want to um, look to the future. Let's not look at this as confinement. Let's look at it as a retreat. We are retreating from life out there in order to create a new and exciting life out there when we leave here. Oddly enough, maybe, I guess God did know which one I needed most. What I have here is what we call a treasure map. My treasure map was that I was looking for time. When I did this treasure map, it was uh, 2007. I was uh, doing ministry. I pioneered a church. And in order to support myself and Sammy, I also worked a full-time job which meant I had very little time or energy for anything else. But I want to share with this because I get a paper and pencil if you think you might want to make some notes because you can do this. You can do it with your family. You can do it by yourself. You can do it, you know, kids, nothing kids like more than cutting and pasting. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to maybe do treasure maps with Tristan on our weekly portal call. And the other kids, Jackie and JT, the, uh, the I call them my Florida family, uh, they're teenagers, and maybe they would want to do it too. I'm going to think about that. Anyway, this is my treasure map. Now, it might look like stuff cut out of magazines and stuck on a piece of paper, but it's more than that. It, it gives us the opportunity to focus. You see, it's easy to say, I want more time, and to go out about your day and forget that you really wanted more time. And it's just like with money. If this were about money, we can say we want more money. But if we don't look at it and connect with it and hold that where? Thought and, and heart. Mind and heart. Brain and heart. We want to have the thought and connect it with the feeling so that we will manifest it. Uh, the one, one of the ones, I have several because I do these. Uh, one of the ones I couldn't find was how I manifested a house. And now I, I want you to hear this. With treasure mapping, God is the center of it all, number one. This is not about some kind of magical thing. This is metaphysical. It's proving the thoughts and minds as we align with God will manifest. So I did a treasure map and I didn't have a picture of the house I wanted, so I drew a picture of this house and I drew a little, thing, a little house next to it and I you know, all the stuff. And like a year later, and I hung it up where I could see it. This is it. When you do a treasure map, you want to keep it where you can see it all the time. So I, um, I hung it up, and I kind of like it became what they call a part of the landscape. That's like clutter. In your house, clutter becomes part of the landscape. You forget it's there until there's company coming, and all of a sudden, like, ah, look at all this stuff. But you don't even think about it when you walk by it every day. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, it had kind of become a part of the landscape. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, focusing on it a real whole lot, but I'd look at it and I'd look at it. And then one day I bought a house. And as I was packing to move into my house, I took, I took the, the treasure map and I saw I had manifested my house. 
But here's a little interesting piece. It's the most interesting piece. I did not manifest the bigger house. I manifested the most God and I. Okay, okay, God and I manifested the most wonderful little cottage. I love that cottage. And I think the reason that I wound up moving away from that cottage is maybe because at that moment I didn't feel the big enough believing to know I could keep it in difficult times. Or God had another plan. So if you got a paper and pencil, I would like you to make a couple of notes about doing a treasure map. One of the most important things that should be on it is something that leads to God. In mine here, I put divine order. I acknowledge God would bring what I needed in the perfect time. Now the other thing I did is, <clears throat> up here, uh, this says, thank you God. It acknowledges. This isn't magic. It's mystics and metaphysics. <clears throat> thank you God. Remember, this one is on time. I have plenty of time. Then it says, this or something better. You always leave room for God to work. On my treasure map where I had the house, the little house that I was blessed with was far more precious than the larger house I had drawn. But did you notice how Spirit was guiding me as I drew up that treasure map and I added that little house? Why did I add the little house? I don't know. I think Divine Spirit was letting me know one day I would realize that God is working in our lives even if it looks like he's not. God is working in our lives. Okay, so this says, uh, let's see, I have uh, time to entertain. I have plenty of, and I, I put plenty, I put plenty over all these. Plenty of entertaining time, plenty of cleaning time. I don't like to clean, I just like the way it is when it's done. Plenty of family time, plenty of travel time. Here's a good one. Plenty of brooding time. Do you have enough brooding time? That's funny because it was my mom did not give me a good understanding of the word brooding. Because if we were walking around kind of like, my mom would say, what are you brooding about? Well, what I thought she meant like frowning, pouting, uh, sulking, but no, brooding is, I found this out way later, brooding is when the, the hen sits on her eggs to hatch them. So, brooding, do you, are you taking time to brood your ideas? Are you taking time to open your mind and open your, your heart? And, and being open and receptive to God's living spirit of truth to let the ideas come in? Or are you so busy you're crowding out your brooding time? So I hope if I said to you tomorrow, what are you brooding about? You'd be able to tell me something wonderful. And uh, th this, says, this says Alicia's on it, so it's acknowledging this is mine. Plenty of me time. Plenty of prayer time. Plenty of work time. And these little things, they take 20 minutes. I got all kinds of car, you know, uh, clocks. And, and then here it says, very important, it's not what you've got, but what you do with it that counts. No matter how much time you've got, it's not what you've got, but what you do with it that counts. What a wonderful idea for spending your time, time, uh, during your uh, staying home, during your uh, sheltering in place. Um, what if you like, what if you were like planting seeds, okay? This is a focal point 
for creative visualization. Make one, put it somewhere you can focus. Maybe you want to put it near where you, where you pray. Maybe you want to put it in your Bible. If you read the Bible every day, just put it where every day you can open up go, yep, I like the refrigerator. Lord knows I hover around it enough. So I hope that you will find this is a, is a helpful idea as we go through uh, our time, our isolation time. I hope that you're doing that. And I'd like to ask you one more thing before I go today. Um, how is how's your normal life? They say this is a new normal. I don't see it as a new normal. I see it as, again, I'd say it as a retreat from every normal. But in that, in that retreat where things are not the same, I invite you to look at how to um, how to have a sameness to every day things like I, you know I know I say you know what are you wearing make sure you get dressed every day I'm not saying that to make you feel guilty if you don't if you're happy in your pajamas and you feel that you are upbeat productive not depressed if that works for you fine I mean I know I could live in sweats um, so pick out if that's normal do you make your bed? Uh, a lot of people don't. I make my bed. I'm, my mother used to have to practically twist my arm to make me make my bed, but you know, I really like getting into a nice, smooth, made bed. I don't like crawling in the same way I crawled out. It just doesn't work for me. Um, my empty sink. Th those things are all normal. My afternoon cheese and wine and triscuits. It's a part of normal routine. So I do invite you to let your, keeping your normal routines will help you get up at the same time you always got up. Go to bed the same time you always went to bed. I'm having a hard time with that because it's always a challenge for me because I am a very rebellious child when it comes to bedtime. I'm not tired, but I'm not tired. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that, but I'm not tired. I, you know, parent parent yourself if necessary. Um, I think that's about everything that I wanted to share today. And um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And I hope that your day will be uh, a bright and beautiful and blessed. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.